It's it's so refreshing hear you hearing you talk like that. And there's there's a couple of things I want to take from that. Firstly, how you know for a long time, restaurant industry, hospitality industry, there's so many businesses that are opening, a lot of investment, you know, really focusing on beautiful interiors, a fad food, jumping on a bandwagon, and it's mm. all about the output. It's all about what's going on the doors. It's it's they're not building a culture. And actually, if we look back to how businesses may have behaved in the past, although we're in very different circumstances now. It's about actually creating those foundations and the food is the vessel through which you're, you're putting this positive message and you're helping people to reassess the way we're all connected, yes. which is a beautiful thing. And it happens to be food that's you know amazing looking, tasting, great for you, affordable. Um, and it's, it seems bringing all of those elements together is, is something that has a lot more durability and yes it might have a bit of a, a slower start and yes it takes a while to build those foundations and to really ensure that you're getting the right product out at the right time in order to promote that message but investing that time is something that we've lost people seem to want everything now they want quick returns they want quick food they want but really you know it's we're, we're evolving at a slower pace. You know, we've been on this planet for a long time and, and the way that businesses and industries have, have developed exponentially within such a short period of time has had a negative effect on our health, on our economies, on our communities. Um, and it's, it's really lovely to hear about a business that's founded in something that's more than just getting that quick return. It's more mm -hmm. than going, I can make that much more money if I feed someone something that's processed, something that's you know, a lower quality food product and I can package it in something sexy and I can just get it out the door. And it's yeah. so great that you guys are, are looking at and doing that. How have, how have your teams responded? How have you felt, you know, you've been up until this point of being, you know, your teams have been growing, you've been cooking meals, you've been working in businesses, you've been going into corporate environments and, and delivering their team's food. How have you, how have you felt that your team within the Bear Kitchen has, has grown and developed and responded to, to the mission and purpose. Michael, maybe you can answer this one for me. It's quite interesting, you know, if we like just say that, you know, you have a, a person starting with us because we have cross stack of people and we didn't hire everyone in one go. And, you know, the, 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 they come in and they, you know, normally they used to work in a food production kitchen uh, where they normally just come in and they're told to do their job. Anyway. And that's, you know, a minimum. Everybody expects your people to be on time and all those things. And of course, we talk about these things as well. But then we bring out the conversation around why we're here. What is our purpose? Why is it important that you're doing it in a specific way? Why are we doing the things we're doing? How is this all connected back to what I can say, you know, the, the, the people, planet, and community? And, and, and as they start to get that, you can really see, and we've seen this, Especially, you know, we, we're sitting here, you know, uh, in, in May, uh, sorry, June, uh, uh, and uh, we are a couple of months now into this COVID-19. And, uh, and it's insane. We had a, a team meeting this morning and you can still feel that they're still there, you know, they're, they're ready to come back. They're hungering to, because they know we are doing more than, than food. Uh, they know that we need to come back. They understand that this is not just about serving a meal. It's about all the other things we do. Um, so I think actually we, you know, when you get a crisis, actually there's nothing better because you really get into the core of what you are. And what I've seen, and I don't know if Jens has a different angle, is that actually all the things we put in them about talking about purpose, and, and I, can, I can still remember some of them uh, that started, uh, you could just see that, well, what are they talking about? Why, why is this so important with these standards? Why is it important to be that better than others? Because another thing we do is not just talking about purpose. We're talking about we want to deliver it on a very high level. We want to be, you know, we want to be the best. We want to win as well, but winning for people, community, and the planet. And therefore, you need to perform on a high level. And, and it's interesting to see from there where they came in and see where they are now, where they are much more engaged. They're like sharing things. Have you seen that? Have you heard about, you know, the bounce back loan? Have you? So, and, and it's just amazing. You know, um, I didn't expect many of them showing up on our weekly call. They still mm -hmm. show up. Um, so I think that's the power of purpose. And I think that's what happens with people. They will be skeptical in the beginning because they're not used to see this when they get a job. They're normally getting a job being told what to do and told when they're wrong 
are not doing a good job. But actually, when you're actually focusing on building their strength and you're focusing on giving them information and educate them, you know, they, they, they really care, you know, and you have some really intelligent people that really want to do a difference, you know, and we all want to do a difference before we leave this planet. So, so yeah, I think, I think we have something, you know, we're not there yet. We're still on a journey, but I think like we've been very, very lucky that we actually succeeded with what we wanted to achieve. I don't know if you have another angle on it, Jens. But no, 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 but I think I'd just like to add something which I think is quite uh, 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 key to this. And, and that's all, that goes for our audience in general. So with, with most brands, the brand is the hero. It's like, look at this brand. It will solve all your problems for you. Whereas the, in, in, in the Bear Kitchen universe, uh, the brand is actually a, a mental role. So if you think about, you know, Merlin and the Sword of the Stone or, or the Fairy Godmother in Cinderella, you know, it's like, it's that mental role where we can't do the work for you. We, we can't change your life or the world, you know, but we can give you the tools and the inspiration. We can empower you to do so. And I think that this is what I've seen in my interaction with our employees working with them in the kitchen is that they feel immensely empowered. Um, as an example of this, uh, Ross um, Hewitt, who's a Mancunian, 21 years old, uh, who, um, who has been working with the Bear Kitchen for what, uh, four months or so. And he came up to me a, a, a month ago and he said, look, Jens, I have to say to you, I mean, the Bear Kitchen has absolutely changed my life because my view on food was so limited. Mm. And now I feel much more liberated because of our approach to, t to teaching cooking, which is instead of recipes, we look at the underlying principles, you know, so the, again, the, the, the why, why things are like uh, they are. Um, and I think it's this empowerment where we're not we're, we're we're saying look it's 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 not us it's not about us it's about you we're just here as a mentor as a coach uh which is a very different thing than having a manager or a boss uh, we try not to use this kind of lingo in the bear kitchen you know we talk about coaches and leaders uh mentors uh, and actually the linguistics of this uh, programs the whole experience that employees have in a very different way um, and I think that's why, you know, when we had this team call this morning, um, uh, that you can really feel that even though, uh, you know, things are uncertain, that there, there is I, very little, if any doubt, that the Bear Kitchen is going to bounce back in the minds of these employees. They know that we are going to make it. And I think that's really encouraging for, for Mike and I as founders, because obviously it's, Nothing is particularly certain, and, and, and the face we put up is obviously, of course, we're going we're gonna to make it back. But there is, it's great to feel that there is that kind of a, a culture of, of team spirits, um, which is, uh, again, driven by empowerment rather than sort of the top-down approach that you find in so many traditional companies. It seems like people in your teams, they're investing and they're emotionally committed to you and the purpose rather than to a brand or to a product. Hospitality is, uh, you know, it's a difficult industry. We, we've we all in it. We all understand the challenges that it faces and now more than ever, we'll face them again. But what always frustrates me a little bit is you talk to a lot of businesses and it's like staff is a, new, is a notorious problem. You know, yeah. it's tension and getting the right chefs, especially, you know, chefs and, and the the kitchen side of hospitality is always the high turnover of staff, the long hours, the frustration with staff, the apparent non-motivation of staff. And you, people always say, oh, it's because it's hospitality and a lot of people don't think it's a proper job. However, yeah. you start to understand talking to, to people um, such as you guys in the bare kitchen that maybe it's not the staff. Maybe it's the fact that people can't feel safe confident relaxed they're not buying into the businesses that they're working for you mm. have a quick uh, you know a, a quick turnover of staff because the yeah. staff don't care for the business they work in you don't you just either you pay them a lot of money but then you still don't care about them yeah. or you don't pay them that much money and you still don't care about them and then they've got nothing to they, the only thing a lot of them have is in terms of kind of buying into is the fact that maybe they really like their co-workers and they get on with their, their friends that they work with but they don't care about the business and I mean, I mean, there's a lot of businesses now that staff are leaving looking for new jobs yeah. and that seems to me this seems to me a really sensible way of doing business yeah i mean i i, I think it, it's almost as you say so you have this uh, this this configuration where on the one side you have this, the employees 
they're trying to extract as much value from the business as possible. They're not bought into the vision or the purpose because most of the time there is none. And on the other hand, you have the business trying to extract as much value as they possibly can from the employees. So you've got two opposing like mm-hmm. forces that are pulling either direction. And as you can see now with, I think Caluchos is a, is a great example of a business where, where, where this very clearly happened and started out in a great place. And then it became all about profit maximization and margins and managers that wanted to, that had targets they needed to meet. So that was an Excel exercise. And then on the other hand, you had the employees and the, it, it, there was incongruence. There was no alignment in terms of where the business was going. Um, and um, again, I mean, I, I think we can stress enough, all of us here understand that the businesses that do not wake up to this new reality, you know, they, they really will struggle even more than they're doing now and most likely will go under um, because the world is not uh, for business as usual anymore. It's a very unusual circumstances and it's not going to change, you know. So I think discovering purpose and, and uh, integrating purpose in something that goes way beyond just making profit is absolutely, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a key success factor. It's going to be a matter of survival for businesses. And it, it is, and it's it, like you say, it's, it's a key success factor. It's also the most common sense. And it's also how humans have evolved to, to work together. You know, we're craving and we're missing so many things in our modern lives. And we're so detached from emotional states, from relationships, from the way we eat, from food. And it's really creating unhealthy results in our society. And we're seeing it in health problems. We're seeing it in economic, socio problems all over the world right now. And it's taking businesses back to how people should interact as humans and how we should all work together as humans towards something that ultimately is going to benefit everybody and ultimately Mm -hmm. going to benefit our host, this planet that we're living on. And to go back to it, we've got so far away from this, but as we talk about it, it seems like, obviously, this is how you should do business. Obviously, Mm -hmm. this is how you should treat people. Obviously, this is how we should be feeding and nourishing are most vulnerable in society and you know helping people come together in communities and and take back things like growing their own food and and take back their their personal health so mm. it's it is super exciting when we're talking about it and i was wondering mm. if there was if there was a point with either of you if there was that trigger moment where you had an epiphany whether you read something or something happened to you that you went oh this isn't the way that we should be doing things or have you always felt like this <laughs> 